All right. Hello and welcome to the Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM here in a beautiful, very hot actually, uh, San Diego this afternoon. And I'm joined by Oscar Trimboli, who is in Sydney, I presume, early, relatively early in the morning there, Oscar, right? Yeah, good evening, John. It's nice and early in the morning here, only 7.30. We've had a beautiful sunrise over the city and uh, looking forward to uh, a 12-kilometre run on the weekend with uh, a bunch of people we run for cancer research. So oh, uh, very that's good. what we got to look forward to. And where is the race on? Well, we're all training for the Sydney Half Marathon, which will be around the city itself. And uh, this weekend, we'll be training in one of the beautiful national parks just on the outskirts oh. of Sydney, where you get lots of fresh air from the trees. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, as I was saying to Oscar before we came on air, um, I spent quite a lot of time traveling for business in Australia. I always love it when you fly from the US to Australia you lose a day. There's a day that never exists in your life. And then you leave in the afternoon and arrive back the same day uh, here. So, I mean, it all gets a bit messed up, but it's all good. Great. Place. It all evens out in the long run. It John. does. It does. Um, all right. Um, so, Oscar, we wanted to talk about uh, deep listening. And Oscar is a mentor, leadership coach, a speaker and an author. And one of his uh, one one of his areas is deep listening, discovering the five myths of listening. So I want everybody to pay particular attention and listen carefully while Oscar explains what does deep listening mean. Look, most of us listen in black and white, John, and deep listening is listening in technicolor. It's listening across five dimensions of listening. Most of the literature or if you've been on a sales training course, mm -hmm. you would have heard this two ears and one mouth, use them in that mm -hmm. proportion. Listening is the most important part of selling, and that's it. That's mm -hmm. the extent of the training you receive on listening. As a sales professional, you're spending 63% of your day listening, and only 2% of salespeople have ever been taught how to listen. If you're in sales management, you're spending 83% of your day listening. But again, if only 2% of us have learned how to listen, I think the sales hack of the 21st century is learning how to listen beyond the words. Too many of us focus on what's being said. And the ninja move of listening is listening to what's unsaid. Mm. And it's interesting, though, Oscar, because in some ways uh, we live in, a, we live in a, a, a pervasive culture today that is also instantaneous and people are people are used to not really being engaged, right? They're used to, you know, flicking through something on their phone, li liking it, whatever. So the idea of engaging in real deep listening to a lot of people, it's kind of an alien concept. And it's a complete differentiation when it comes to sales. The first myth of listening, John, is that you need to be fixated on the prospect and listen to them. That's handy, that's useful, mm -hmm. but it's not powerful and productive. The first person you need to listen to is you. Before I came in on this call today, the very first thing I do, I switch my phone into flight mode. Mm -hmm. I know I will not be distracted. But here's the thing that your prospects will notice. If you pay them attention, you'll be differentiated from every other rep. And there's three quick tips I'd love to give everybody yeah. to start to build a great foundation to listening. Turning up to a sales call, the minute you walk into the building, switch your phone into flight mode. Mm -hmm. Get ready for the conversation. As you go into the elevator or as you approach reception, just take three deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. I'm not asking you to become a yoga teacher or anything like that. But in that moment, you'll start to do something really simple. You'll set your intention for the meeting and your intention needs to be out on them and their problems, not on you and your quota. And then the third thing is if you get to reception and they offer you tea or coffee, sure, great, accept those. But please also take a glass of water. Mm -hmm. One for you and as many for the prospects that are in the room as possible. See, a hydrated brain is a listening brain. And if you understand some simple neuroscience, the brain is only 5% of body mass, but it consumes 26% of the blood sugars. Mm -hmm. And if you can get your brain to be hydrated, you'll be in a much better position to listen. So if we get those three simple foundational things right, phone into flight mode, take three deep breaths, drink water through the, through the uh, interaction, your foundations 
brilliant. You are miles ahead of any competitive rep that's going to walk in and offer a, an alternative solution because you're paying them attention. Mm -hmm. And as sales professionals, we are part of the product. We are part of the service. And if you can turn up and be completely present, the most important thing you can do for your prospect pay them attention yeah and i think that's a really key point there that you that you highlight oscar and that's the idea of you know pay attention but being present because i think this is as i said i think this is something that people are are losing because of their devices because of all of the different distractions that are coming at them they're they're not doing as you say i mean when they're walking into the building they're still checking their texts and checking their emails and checking their instagram and whatever else they're checking maybe as they're going up in the elevator they're checking the news who knows but they're they're not being present and you can't just switch into being present when you walk in the door of the meeting room is it because your whole mind is all like, you know discombobulated yeah, I mean, you wouldn't go to a you wouldn't go to a, a concert and have your earphones in listening to a completely different set of music. Yeah. But most of us turn up to a sales call with a story in our head. Maybe it's about the last meeting. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's about the meeting after this. Maybe it's about your travel schedule. Maybe it's about the fact you've got to pick up kids from school. And while you're doing that, your focus and attention isn't there. You're not going to pick up on the way your prospect's breathing the way their vo vocal cords might change slightly as they mention a particular term so you can tap into the emotion of what's being said there. I, I really think it's critical that people pay attention to the person in front of them. It's really the distinguishing feature between average performing sales professionals and high performing sales mm -hmm. professionals. Yeah, and there's nothing more frustrating, right, Oscar? It's when... Um, a prospect. I mean, think of it when a salesperson comes into you, and you're having the conversation, and then you ask you ask a question, and they answer it, but they answer a different question, or they don't answer what you ask them, and it's clear after a while that they weren't actually really listening to your question. They were list. They were thinking about what they were going to say next, and that's very frustrating. Or they're sticking to their plan, and that's a, that's really frustrating for the person on the other side, right? Yeah. And for a lot of us, we're, we're going in listening for code words that we can mm -hmm. relate to our solution. And you're missing the point. The job of a good salesperson is to sell the product. The job of a great salesperson is to sell the business case for the solution you're implementing. And that's a huge difference. You need to help the prospect to be able to navigate this business case through finance, through operations, through customer service, whatever the divisions are. And if you're not listening for what's unsaid, if you're not mm -hmm. listening for context, if you're not listening for meaning, you're likely to be in a situation where I was brought in uh, about seven years ago, an organization sold contact center software. They were in New Zealand last quarter of the fiscal year. They were going through all the procurement process, two weeks out from end of quarter. It was forecast to close and then nothing. Mm -hmm. The whole whole end of quarter passed, nothing, and then finally the customer came back and said, look, you're still the selected vendor, but our CFO got a great deal from Kimberly Clark. Mm -hmm. So Kimberly Clark sell diapers, but sure. they also sell toilet paper. So Kimberly Clark made a deal with the CFO, buy the whole year's toilet paper, we're gonna give you a 50% discount. And the CFO went, great deal, I'm going to do that deal and I'm going to delay the contact center mm -hmm. deal. Now, the reality is 12 months later, they got the deal. Mm -hmm. But they really weren't listening for who else approves this? What yeah. is your approval mm -hmm. process? Too many of us think the person in front of us is the person we need to listen to. A really powerful question is, so who else is involved in what we're selling to you or what you need to buy if you're putting in customer centric language. The other thing that distinguishes really good reps from great reps is not that they're selling the product to solve your customers problems. Mm -hmm. Good sales reps are customer centric. Great sales reps, they're focused on their customers customer. Yes, exactly. And the really outstanding reps in that field are focused on their customers, customers' problems. But very few of us are thinking that many steps mm -hmm. ahead because we're not listening that way. So mm -hmm. for a lot of us, we need to understand some really simple neuroscience when it comes to listening, John. 
if you take one thing out of today, it's this. If you only remember one thing, it's this. If you want to apply something immediately, it's this. I speak at 125 words a minute but I can think at up to 900 words a minute. Mm -hmm. So there's an 11% chance that what I'm saying is what I'm thinking. So I don't know about you, John, but at my stage in life, I kind of see more doctors than I should. Mm -hmm. And if I had an 11% chance of surviving a surgery, I'd ask for a second opinion, right? For sure. Not enough of us are asking our mm -hmm. prospects, tell me more. Yeah. Because when you say, tell me more, they use these magic code words. Listen out for these. They're really important. They'll take a deep breath in and they'll say something like, well, actually, mm -hmm. or you know what is really important that I haven't told you? And good sales rep only hear this between the end of the meeting and the elevator or right. while they're shaking hands at the end of the meeting because you, the prospect has been given mm -hmm. time to think about it. So if you understand there's this huge gap between what they say and what they're thinking, you need to ask a few more questions. And the questions you need to ask is tell me more. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting. It's interesting about that Oscar is that because um, number one, there's a few things that you mentioned there that I just want to underline for everybody. The first one is um, Gartner did research and they discovered in most B2B sales uh, that there is at least seven people involved in the buying process. Right. Yeah. So there you go. So if I'm only focusing on Oscar, as great as Oscar is, and I'm building up my relationship, if I'm not figuring out who is around Oscar, who else is involved in this, in this purchasing um, process, then as you say, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get into, I'm probably going to get myself into bother later. Um, the other part that's interesting there is that very few people validate what the prospect said to them, right? Is you say something to me, and I just take it at face value, instead of saying, just let me let, let me just run that back again, Oscar. Let me understand and make sure I understand exactly what you're saying, because that helps you to get them to start to, um, you know, to give you more information and actually build upon what they're saying and get into those moments that you're talking about. Right. Yeah. And good, good listeners will use these techniques that they're trying to listen to make sense for themselves. So. Mm -hmm a great sales leader will listen to help the prospect make meaning from mm -hmm. this. So it's great. So let's imagine um, we've successfully implemented the project. What does this mean for you? What does this mean for the CFO? Mm -hmm. What does this mean for human resources? What does this mean for operations? If you were to describe your organization right now, if it was a movie, what kind of movie would it be? I had a funny story about oh, nine months ago. I was working with an organization and I asked that question, you know, what kind of movie is it? And, and they said, to a person, there were seven people in the room. They all said it was a disaster movie. No. They all said Die Hard, Titanic, <laughs> Tower Inferno, all of that. And when you ask questions like, you know, tell me what would it be like if this was a movie, you give them permission to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. Never in a million years would an organization tell you that they're a disaster. Mm -hmm. But if you listen for meaning and you ask questions like that, all of a sudden you go, okay, so this is the context I'm walking into. You know, so what happens in a disaster? Time periods are shortened. Decision making mm -hmm. is much more rapid as opposed to, you know, if you were to describe our, our organization, oh, it's a romantic comedy at the moment. Everybody's really nice to each other, but we never have the conversations that really matter, right? Different context mm -hmm. again. There's a lot of unsaid. There's a lot of undiscussed. There's a lot of politics going on in that organization. So your your context in how, but if you're if you're in your phone or even worse, mm -hmm. you're on a laptop or an iPad and you're typing notes, you're going to miss all that nuance. Mm -hmm. You're going to miss when they breathe differently. You're going to miss when their spine is back and erect versus slouch forward as opposed to leaning forward and really listening in to what you've got to say. Uh, uh, from A tip from a world memory champ. Four-time world memory champ Boris Conrad. Can you believe there's such a thing, John? No, I, I no, I'm, I'm just I'm just actually just thinking. I'm saying, wow, there's a there's a there's Olympics for everything, isn't there? Yeah. So these guys can sh have a duck, a deck of cards shuffled in front of them, fifty-two cards, and they can recite them back in order wow. in under in under a minute. Oh, and goodness. like there's fifty-two cards. I can't believe it. But Boris said something really powerful. He said, if you're in a meeting and you're taking notes and you're taking notes on a keypad most of us will be saying the words in our head as we're typing them. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we shut down the auditory cortex, the part of the brain that means you can hear. 
So he said, if you're in there with an iPad, use a stylus, take graphical notes, but only take graphical notes about the meaning of the conversation, not verbatims. Mm -hmm. And if you want to take notes around actions, just put an A with a circle around it, but you have more time to be focused on the prospect. So he was a big fan of graphical notes and analog notes. And for you as the salesperson in that situation, your recall is going to be better, but more eye time is with the prospect yeah. as well. And then again, you're differentiating yourself in the sales process. You are the part of the product of the organization. You are part of the service. And if you can distinguish yourself by being present in that moment, mm -hmm. you're going to be really different all of a sudden. And people will likely to trust you more, like you more and want to work with you more as a result. Yeah, and remember that old adage which still holds true. I mean, people don't remember so much what you said, but they remember how you made them feel. And if you mm. were if you were present, if you were engaged, if you were asking good questions, if you were validating and really trying to understand, if you were, as you say, giving them the opportunity to tell you more because they felt comfortable, they'll remember all of that. Yeah, and look, John, for a lot of us, and it's happening to people right now, for you listening right now, you're distracted. Here's another thing to remember. I could talk at 125 words a minute, but you can listen at 400. So you're programmed to be distracted. But if you're, a, if you're a deep listener, what the difference is, you start to listen for different things. Here's a challenge. If you've nailed the three tips around getting your phone into flight mode, breathing and water, start to listen for these linguistic hints. Does the prospect talk about the past or the future more in the mm. conversation? Does the prospect talk about problems or solutions? Does the prospect talk about themselves as individuals or do they talk about the team, the system, the organization? And are you talking into that? Because if they're talking all about the past, a lot of sales reps suffer from terminal futurism. They're always selling the future. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to believe you if you don't take the time to understand their past. If they're anchored in the past, no matter what you say about the rocket ship you're going to get them on, <laughs> they're stuck in the past. You need to spend time with them in the past and almost burying the past with them. You uh, need a funeral. Yeah. But most of us aren't even conscious of that. We're not listening at that level. We're listening for product code words. Ah, okay, they've got a problem with this. Mm -hmm. our, our product solves the fact that they have distributed teams across the world and they need a secure solution to log into. So let me talk about that too early. Yeah. They're stuck in the past. So for many people, they are unconscious of these beautiful linguistic cues that the people in the room are going to give to you. Yeah, it's a, I'm just saying to underline that as well. I think that's a fantastic point for people to take away because, as you say, if somebody is talking about the past, what they're actually telling you probably is that these kind of things didn't work in the past and I'm very I'm very reluctant to do this again so until you help me believe that it's not going to be the same I'm not really going to listen right yeah and the the most potent thing that I've ever learned about listening is if you can explain their problem to them better than they can explain mm -hmm. it they actually believe you've got the solution without saying anything about the mm -hmm. solution so, John, in that case, one of the questions you would ask the prospect, what derailed the success of that project? Tell me more. And they're mm -hmm. going to give you beautiful insight. Some of it was about the people. Some of it was about systems. Some of it was about the leader. Some of it was about not enough money set aside. Some of it was about the project management office. They're giving you all these beautiful directions and creating a map for you to go, I've got to tick that off and that off and that off as I go into the future, but we jump too quickly to mm -hmm. the future. Too many salespeople, that's the thing they suffer the most from linguistically. They jump, they tell you about a bright and shiny future where all they want to know is what's the basic simplest <laughs> next step. Yeah. Look, there's five levels of listening, but I've only ever talked about one today because 86% mm -hmm. of people are stuck at level one and I want to help 
everybody. I'm on a quest to create 100 million deep listeners in the world, John, and I'm not going to do it talking about listening for meaning for all this discussion. So yeah. I'm trying to role model this change as we talk about it as well. Yeah, well, we're, we're bumping up against the end of our time. So what I thought is what we should do, Oscar, is maybe you'll come back and then we'll talk about all the other levels, maybe on subsequent calls, because I think it's a fascinating thing. And I like the idea of people taking away one level at a time, because this is a, a really, really difficult. Do you know, what is um what is the one complaint when people go into therapy, say couples therapy in particular, what is the one, the biggest complaint is you don't listen. And what is the first thing, by the way, that this is how all couples therapists earn their money. Do you know what they do is they say, Oscar, you stay quiet. This is John's turn to talk, right? John talks and then the therapist says, Oscar, what did John say? And you repeat it and then you go, is that what you, John, is that what you said? No, it's not what I said. And you can't move on. You can't move on until Oscar actually can absolutely tell me what I said. And I think so. I think it's a, it's such a critical piece. Uh, look, here's one tip. Um, I get asked, do genders listen differently? Mm -hmm. It's the number one thing I get asked. And, and, and I've got a proprietary database. We've got 1,400 people in the database. The data tells us and other academic surveys, no, people don't listen differently across genders. But here's a huge tip. Uh, women listen to feel and men listen to fix. So men stop fixing women. They're not broken. It's really critical. And that's the biggest complaint women have about men in the way they listen. <laughs> I'm not going to go the other way because I'll get in trouble uh, from my wife. But uh, our, our dog our dog is our best uh, marriage counsellor in our relationship, John. It's that walk after work yeah. with our dog where I'm <laughs> listening to Jen. And that makes the world of difference to me. <laughs> I love it, Oscar. This has been great. So I hope you come back and talk about the other um, the other levels of listening um, on a future on a future session. I'd love to. Yeah. This is this is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM, Oscar Trimboli in Sydney, Australia. It's been fantastic talking with you in your morning, in my afternoon. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. <laughs>